suspense. That suspense. Okay, it's recording. Um, so I started doing this like two years ago, and as you know, podcasts were not quite as popular then as they are now. Uh, and I use this little like phone app. Did a couple of really cool episodes. That's pretty neat. Is that a magnet? Yeah. Oh, that's see? awesome. So people can see what we're doing. Check you out. What do you I think? Mean, I think hmm? I think you got it set up pretty nice Better there. Set up than me. Yeah, that's cool. Look. So there. Very cool. Well, uh, so yeah, recorded the first couple of episodes in like 2018. Mm -hmm. I actually had a, a company that uh, wanted me to host a podcast for them. Oh yeah. And I thought it was pretty cool, but I. You know, they say timing is everything. I, part of it is I wanted to do my own thing and just kind of have fun with it. Well, two years ago, it's kind of, you know, the kind of starting people do podcast was a good time, you know? Yeah. Probably was a good, like, you know, more now will be, you'll be the human oh. Joe Rogan. <laughs> well, it's, like, <laughs> it's so, it's like, I feel like it's like, uh, like real estate, you know, actually there's a really cool guy named Adam Torres was talking about this. Uh -huh. uh, we were talking about this like maybe a year ago, just about how when he started his podcast company, it was like there was a ton of real estate, so he was buying it up oh, real okay. early. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it, it's technology and the pandemic created all that time, so uh, there's so many podcasts now. Yeah, there's so many, and I feel like, you know, some point, for example, I mean, I've been like too fused now, okay, a few podcasts, you know? Yeah. And uh, I feel like, you know, I mean, I always say the same thing almost, you know, because people obviously are curious about what I'm doing, how I, you know, I'm here now doing this kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, at some point it's interesting because always there's a way to motivate people to listen, you know. I mean, from my perspective, it's like when you see like an interview to a new movie release, right? Yeah. Doctor always repeating constantly the same the question always <laughs> the same. And then sometimes say, Well, I don't get tired of that. But you know, there is a promotion, right? You know, but for I see uh, for uh, my perspective is always a way to inspire other people. That's what I, tr I try to bring there, you know, how people, you know, need to be inspired nowadays, right? That's all about. And, and are we st we started? We did, yeah. Oh, we okay. Just, <laughs> I just, just recorded, so we just okay. jumped right into it. Yeah. Okay. We just uh, one of the uh, talking about it. Uh, yeah, no, it's cool, man. Just yeah, it's, mm. that's what I like about it. Is I don't want to make it so official that yeah. it feels like there's just like pressure and just like you we talk and mm -hmm. have cool conversations and yeah. so just want to make it really like that, like super comfortable and have fun. But Absolutely. One of my uh, mentors. Yeah, just let me show people that follow on Instagram. What are you doing here? Cause yeah. The, Okay, I'm not recording the new Italian album, okay? <laughs> oh, Sole Mio in San Diego <laughs> is a uh, here, oh, human Derek. Hey, you're doing follow, a follow the human Derek on Instagram. <laughs> so he started doing podcasts, you know, and uh, he asked me to, we're friends, so we ask, he asked me to uh, come to his podcast. So, yeah, if you guys want to hang out around, you know, I'll be here. Super cool there. I didn't know you were doing live, so all right, yeah. throw it it's on going the like, line. like, you know, everywhere. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> Is okay? Oh, whatever yeah. you want. That's, yeah, that's... Okay. that's if you guys have any question, we are here, right? Uh, we, we could do that, I guess, you have live questions. Yeah, people hey. can read people, they can write something, you know, whatever. If, if they're listening to us while we're doing this, and, mm -hmm. and they got something that... Uh, that comes up, throw it, we'll throw it in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, it's just because, you know, it's usually Saturday, Sunday, people relaxing, so not really watching, you know, what happened on the web. Yeah. But, you know, so if someone is there, if any question, we'll be here, you know, related to anything. We talk, I guess we're talking about anything. Okay. Yeah, and that's... <laughs> uh, absolutely. So, and that's what, what you were talking about with the perspective. So, like, one of my mentors taught me you can't he repeats it a lot you know we repeat things because sometimes we need them at different times mm -hmm. and he said that uh like working with people when you're helping them learn something and you probably experience sure. this because you have a, a lot of background and, and well actually i guess have you introduce yourself in a second here too yeah but he essentially said you know and i know this from my own personal experience maybe you know this is that you can hear different people say the same thing over and over and then 
it sticks sometime. You're like, oh, I can't believe this person said that. And, and 20 other people have said it, <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. that one thing. And it, <laughs> that's what we need sometimes. So, yeah, uh, that's sometimes, you know, I feel, like, I feel like when people repeat constant same thing, you know, and then always con- they, they, they believe that's, that's what it is. They don't dare to change their perspective, right? If people say, oh, he say, he say, he say, he say, so it's true, it's the way it is. You cannot change the perspective. It's mm-hmm. kind of, you know, if you change the perspective, everybody say, oh, I dare you to say that, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, just change a <laughs> word, right? Like the Bible. <laughs> like, you know, don't change it, you know. I don't know, just love my impression, you know. Yeah, it is. Words have a big impact, too. I hear some people say, like, words don't matter, it's what you mean, but I think words do matter. I heard this example that, uh, like, if you said, Kevin bit the dog, and the dog bit Kevin, uh, it's the same words, but different order, so they have, like, a different different meaning, but let's, let's do this real quick. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you... Uh, okay, yeah, background. so uh, yeah. my name is Maurizio Tangeri, the Italian, moved here to U.S., in search of fortune, <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, moving here definitely helped my, you know, things, you know, but I, I think when I came here, didn't came with any, anything in mind, you know, it just happened by chance, so, uh, yeah, so I'm a, a fitness trainer, I want to say, uh, inventor, if you want to say that, you know, yeah. I invent a, a fitness tool, and, uh, uh humanitarian <laughs> maybe i don't know <laughs> talking about the human derek you know because uh, my hydro reach project that's something i would like to talk also yeah. during the process of the podcast uh yeah so i'm here just talk with a friend chit and chat and bring something here <laughs> super cool man and so I, you, <clears throat> I mean i've known you for a couple of years now and i, I want to talk about your invention and, and obviously what you're doing with hydro reach uh, I remember we were in your garage, just maybe it was two years ago. Oh, yeah. And you're like, I got this like bag thing, and I didn't really understand it, but <laughs> I was like, he's really excited about it, so that's pretty cool. And I didn't know much about like what a Bulgarian bag was or anything like that. Yeah. So what is it? And it, it's taken off. I mean, uh, On it is one of my favorite companies. Yeah. You saw my kettlebell collection. Oh yeah, you have there down there. High little call. little gorilla. Oh, I kettlebells. Got, yeah, I got the big yeah. boys out there too. The big guys down oh. there. Yeah, oh, hydro yeah. core. See a hydro core from the wind of there. <laughs> it's funny you say that. There's a so right online and yeah, yeah, buddy, the old days. Yeah, you know so right. Yeah. Yeah, so right. It's a friend of, of mine. Of Dave is online. Hey, so and right. And it's funny because he <laughs> came to my garage. You know, the garage, right? Where yeah. everything starts in the garage, yeah? And uh, he came in my garage and showed me his idea. I had a, your same, like, you know, impression. I say, I don't know what it is, but he's excited. And, you know, he let me try explain more to me. And I said, man, this is freaking cool. And, you know, I loved it. And, you know, now, so right, it's huge. It's everywhere. You see, like, you know, sponsors, like Michael Chandler, you know, Cyborg. Yeah. And uh, th- that's what it is. Everything starts like, you know, uh, with uh, your own excitement, right? If you don't have excitement when you start something, what's the point? If you don't love what, what you get into, what's the point, right? And back then, like, you know, uh, like my friend Dave from So Right, we didn't do things because thinking about getting rich or making money because excitement, because we love it, because we love the idea to do something to maybe help other people. And obviously now the so right is what it is. It's big, you know, hydro core. It's a lot of people using and uh, uh, before thinking, uh, OK, you know, I'm going to make money out of this. Is more like thinking of how can change people's life, I can make people better, you know, and, you know, we're talking about <clears throat> fitness industry, but, you know, in anything you're doing, I guess, you know, uh, if you start in a greedy way, I don't think it's the, the right start. I don't know. Just just what I think. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of power to that. I, when I started a couple of businesses, I sort of have this nice concept of, uh, and by the way, is he local? Is Dave local? Dave uh, now is in Florida. He moved to Florida. He say, help people be the best. That's what he say wow. now <laughs> from So Right. Yeah, my man, my man. Can't wait to see you again, man. Uh, and yeah, go go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so anytime you're doing something, if you put yourself in last place, essentially, right, when it comes to money, if you uh, think of the win for someone else 
and then the win for your, yourself kind of second, the more, the more people you can help. There's a, a company that I've worked with over the last six years called Best Version Media, and they put out these mm -hmm. uh, community publications, and it's a big win for the community that they, uh, you know, people love it. It's super positive. It's not all this negative media. They put local people on the cover. You don't have to be a big celebrity, and you get to yeah. read about your neighbors. And then the, the publishers, the people put out the publications that work with the local businesses, generate a lot of the, the revenue, the sponsorship, they get a big win uh, as a result, too. And it's just that you put other people um, for, why don't you talk, I want to hear actually about the uh, hydro core there. Explain hydro core, what yeah. that is. What is that yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. How can people use it? Absolutely, absolutely. There is a, also online so the bread belt. Do you know the bread belt? I do. I have one of those. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have all the people. You, oh, but you don't yeah. have a so right. I do have a so right. Oh, I have the spine. I have the okay. Spine so one see, the, yeah. Human Derek. So he have a bread belt. Also, the 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 inventor of bread belt is online now. Okay. And I mean, we have the same story. You know. I mean, yeah. it's cool because uh, talking with people. Actually, you know, I kind of you know, uh, uh, that, that was interesting because that time I was uh, developing Hydrocore. It was just an idea in my brain. It was not thinking, you know, I was no idea to make it happen into, you know, to the market, right? Mm -hmm. uh, same time, you know, Dave from uh, the Psorite, you know, we got in touch again after years. I mean, I can say, you know, his, his story, uh, the way he put himself up there, he came to me, showed me his idea with passion. He's kind of, you know, motivated to move forward more. Back then, I had a lot of, you know, things going on in my life. My daughter, you know, was supposed to have an open heart surgery, and um, I didn't know what to do. If you go back to Italy, a good friend of mine just passed, like, you know, the guy they actually... Uh, was my mentor, Steve Nava, which uh, uh, Dave from the Psorite, we met at the Bulgarian Bank Certification more than 10 years ago. Uh, there was master from Steve Nava, ex-Navy SEAL. And then we kind of, you know, lost each other when we met again. And then he had his uh, Psorite idea and I had my hardcore idea. So it's kind of, I want to say, you know, I mean, I don't know if this also uh, helped him to give a little kick, a little push to move forward, but uh, definitely, definitely uh, helped me. He helped me to move forward more, to do more research, to be more, uh, you know, aware of what I was doing, right? You know, all the right step. Because the problem, you know, when you, that's I realized in time, because I mean, obviously I'm working, I worked on Hydrocore, but also I have other invention, other things that uh, I want to put on the market. But you know, the pandemic kind of slowed down everything. So everything is on hold for now. So uh, uh, it's, it's interesting how you can go both direction, right? You can fail, you can succeed, but, uh, I think you fail when you lose that passion, when you lose this, this the, you know, the sparkle. You know what I'm, what I'm saying? Having people around, they, you know, they're negative. <laughs> can go both way. You can translate the negative energy and make it positive. That's what happened in my case because at the beginning, I had every everyone. <laughs> against my idea. I would say against. They don't understand what it was. They mm -hmm. didn't, didn't know what it was. So they didn't care, right? And I'm sure I'm sure it happened the same with uh, Dave. <laughs> I mean, this freaking little it looks like a little skate ramp. You know, remember the the, the fidget, the finger yeah, skate the ramp finger. that was like selling on TV. Uh, yeah. And they looked like that, you know. And uh, probably happened to him. Probably it happened to the Brett Belt. I mean, I talk with uh, with Jesse from the Brett Belt all the time, and and then still like you know you, you don't have a support of people around. You know what I'm saying? People that are still around you, they're still like looking like mm, I don't know. Still they don't know. They're not convinced because people they're convinced when they see that you make a lot of money. They're not convinced when they see like you know the process they want to see the final result right away they want to, nobody want to wait to to succeed they want now they like a, oh uh, you want to make like a six figure in amount you see that things on on instagram all the time and people that believe and they, they really believe because they hire one guy next month they're gonna have a six figure you know what i'm saying this require time require passion require require a lot of uh, a lot of uh, motivation you know that's what it is, you know. Well, and, <clears throat> you know, 
kind of my, my experience too is you were building it in your garage and you're like, hey, what do you think <laughs> of this? Garage. What do you think of that? What I loved about when you were asking me questions about things is that uh, having worked on projects with a lot of people, some people like you're talking about, they're like, well, this isn't going to work and what about that? And that's kind of the negative thing. And sometimes that can be a fuel. I also really like the idea, like even though I didn't quite understand what you were doing, I was having <laughs> fun, like yeah. watching you figure it out. And I think you need those people around, not saying like, hey, have a Derek around type thing, but people that can play with you and be creative and say, what about this? Can ask questions. I find that when I have people around me that are really sharp and, and can ask questions, it can it can fuel that forward. You you said something there too about motivation and, and I'm gonna backtrack a little bit because sure. you talked about your daughter and the open heart surgery and yeah. going back to Italy and those things and and you even threw the word failure in there. And, and when I think of motivation, I mean you can tell I have hundreds of books. Oh yeah, there's, I see that. <laughs> there's books called Beautiful, amazing. <laughs> that, well, and there's a lot of them that are about how motivation is kind of a, uh, it's not real. You need, and willpower and those things that are a limited resource. You need kind of like a higher why or bigger purpose. Where some people can get hung up when they're building something, when they're inventing something, is they have a life event happen. And they drop everything to take care of that. How, how did you, with all of the things happening in the world, in your life personally, continue to drive your invention forward? Well, I mean, uh, you're talking about the pandemic, what happened? Even before with yeah, your daughter. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, there's, there, was, there were a lot of gap, you know. I mean, there's always, always there going to be gap, you know. And uh, it's up to you, you know, figure out how to jump on, going around, dig a tunnel, go under, you know. So there's a different way, you know. But uh, those are important. They're important because... Uh, they make you person that you are now, you know, they make you stronger, they make you better, they make you know, figure things out, figure shit out, right? You know, I mean, I love it. You have a lot of books. There's a lot of like motivational book, behave, <laughs> uh, what I see there, uh, this put yourself something, you know, I mean, a, a lot of things about learning, you know, figure things out, right? You know, and uh, I mean, that's fine, you know. But I had to figure shit by myself. So imagine, I mean, I had no education. You know, I quit school when I was 13, you know, and I started traveling, you know, around and working with my father, digging a hole at the cemetery during the summer, you know, uh, things like that, right? Very, very, you know, humble job, right? And the 16, decide to travel because my grandfather say, because, you know, he was a... He, he, he moved from Italy to U.S., to Germany, traveling around the world, to Venezuela, to, you know, to provide with a family back then, you know, that's what he was before the war. And uh, he always told me, man, if you don't like here, just get the fuck out of you. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Learn language, you know, experience, you know, yeah. that's the best way. Your school will be the world. I'm coming from a little town in South Italy. There was really nothing there, no perspective, you know, and... Italian people are like, you know, you got to find a job, you got to stick with that job for the rest of your life. And, you know, mostly of the job is your grandpa job or your father's job. And, uh, you know, everything, you end up doing the same job for <laughs> generation and generation, right? And not that I, I didn't want to do that. I mean, I loved like work with my father, but I, I needed more, you know. And uh, so I start traveling, I start figuring things out and all the experience, you know, uh, it make me possibly the person what I am now. Like, you know, when it happened, the, the, my friend I, Steve Nave, he was like my mentor, you know, he taught me everything. He told me about how important he is, like if you want to be a fitness trainer, get educated, learn things. But with those questions, nobody gonna, gonna, un gonna, gonna, gonna uh, put the question, you know, on the table, right, about more technical stuff about, you know, biomechanical uh, momentum or things like that, right? But you need to know. You need to know the answer. You know, when it happened, you need to know the answer, right? Maybe probably once in, in your lifetime, but you need to know the answer. And uh, uh, when happened, the, you know, the problem with my daughter, the open heart surgery, those are things that really put you down. But again, it's all you. It's all the way you react, the way you... Uh, are in control of things around you, okay? <clears throat> Being a, of the, 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 the father, the man of the house, you have to stick with one, one uh, 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 face. You can, cannot show emotion, 
because you know they're gonna crumble everything down. Imagine your little bitch crying, you know, uh, your wife crying, and you know your daughter don't know what's going on around. You know, you cannot show those emotion, right? Mm. And uh, there was there was something that they kind of you know uh, was hard. Was hard like keeping one straight face all the time and see oh everything will be fine everything but, but you don't know everything will be fine right uh, uh, back then you know uh, I was really seriously thinking and okay you know go back to Italy because I don't know what to do here improvising like something this plasticky you know bag full of water I don't even know what I got to do with this. I don't have anyone interested. All the people around me, they don't know what the fucking it is, you know? <laughs> so that was, that was hard. That was very hard. But when we put it like the, I mean, got the deal with on it, it was great. And then we put the bag on the, mar on the market. The pandemic just started. <laughs> it was like, you know, man, it was at the door. It was like coming from China. And, uh, and you see, like, so right, say, pursue your happiness. Uh, find what you love. And that puts a fire under your ass. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Later on, excited about your products. Yeah. So, uh, so that's the thing, you know. So say, hey, w this can be a disaster. Imagine, put a fitness product, which, I mean, my, uh, uh, I was expecting, like, you know, gym, buying all over the world, have fitness class and things like that. Mm. And when we put it out, the gym start closing. That was completely another direction. It was a kind of in-home tool, which I didn't expect the people buying more for in-home. Okay, so who yeah. is this? The world, uh, the world changed. So to kind of get clear, you you're putting out your product, the Hydro Core, which is uh, we'll have to get a. You actually have some other stuff. Here, yeah, some other stuff to show you. So descri describe what it is for for someone that they can't see. Wait, wait, there is a guy that just yet. connected with me. <laughs> this is a cool person. Hello, my man. Hey, I've been a live, uh, uh, no, it's not a live, but it's a, a third, podcast. We got a so, third guest here, huh? Yeah, it's a guest here. He's uh, 73, right? Yeah. 73 years old. Okay, this is a Derek. Uh, Hello. Hey. And he used a hydrocore. Uh, yesterday, he sent me a message that he made my day because uh, those are the things that now, looking like uh, uh, years after the struggle and everything, when I receive a message for a person like this, that tell me is helping him to uh, uh, again find the motivation to uh, stay healthy again and go back uh, to work out. Those are the <clears throat> things that say, "Man, I win." Even if just one person does that, if I was able. It's the best thing that's happened to me, Mauricio. <laughs> it's it's the best thing that's happened. It's you know I do um, Tai Chi, I do Bagua, I you know. But I use that bag, and that bag gets my core moving. It activates that core. Every single movement that you do, you're, you're activating that core. And if you're doing Tai Chi or anything else that's using the core, and what doesn't use the core? Yeah, hydro core. Any, any, <laughs> exactly. Any kind of movement you make with that. You've activated that. I appreciate and my man. That that's great. I mean, really, it's amazing. You it you is. yesterday I was talking with a friend and my wife, and you know I posted the 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 message you sent me privately, and you know again sorry if I did that without asking. Oh, it was kind of you know oh what, what's going on here? You like, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, I mean really I receive sometimes those type of messages. They excite me and you know keep me to move forward more than any strong dude posting like a crazy video, working out, sweating, jumping around. If I can uh, help, you know people like you, I'm I'm a winner. Minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But just a constant, you know, a constant motion. I saw somebody that said that their yeah. GP said uh, buy one to get, you know, doing some weight work. You can do it with a cup of a cup of water in there. Yeah. The rest air. Yeah. Start easy and just. It, it doesn't have to. You don't have to be a muscle man or anything. It's it's the perfect workout. I do it almost every day. 
I don't do that. I do kettlebells. I do maces. Awesome. You know, I do, you know, the Tai Chi and stuff. Done that for 25 years. But um, you, you've really came up with something that people can be working out at home all the time. Can work out every day. Walk by, see it, pick it up, swing it around a couple of times. You've done some functional movement. Absolutely. Yeah, and then uh, the yeah, and then watch watch the message you sent me yesterday. I kind of started like thinking today to I always had that idea to design a program uh, uh, for senior. And uh, uh, when I say that, uh, uh, you know, there's uh, some something you know they need to be addressed, needs, and you know, uh, range of motion. But uh, but you know, there's something definitely I want to start doing. You know, working out with that, and I will start working with the professional. They're more like you know, uh, familiar with the type of language and the type of needs. Right. You know, so right. that will be interesting. And uh, really, uh, uh, you will be the first time to see first okay. person to see the program. I promise, my man. <laughs> okay. <Good laughs> I appreciate I appreciate care. your uh, your feedback. Yourself. Bye, my man. Bye. Okay. It's a great product. <laughs> I appreciate. It. Bye. But. Hey, so that's a, that's a pretty solid commercial there. So let's, for, for people that are listening that haven't seen this yet, describe what it is and, and, and who might, who might like it. What it, yeah, just tell us what you're doing. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know if you can get it. I didn't get it, but, uh, uh, yeah, Hydrocore is a, is a water filled, like look like Bulgarian bag. So it's sandbag, let's say mostly like a sandbag, but you put water inside, okay? Mm -hmm. Because of the shape, uh, you know, you can put on your on your uh, back. So you can check it out, hydro.core on Instagram, hydrocore, you just Google it on on it website. There's a tons of video out there, so you can have mm -hmm. an idea what it is. And on it is O-N-N-I-T. Exactly. So um, mostly... Again, you know, when you, this is, that's my thing. I don't know other inventor, how they do it. I feel like I've done, I've done everything uh, reversed sometimes, they say, because having no education, having no uh, uh, concept of how to put a product on the market or invent product, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just like from my uh, own personal experience, I just decided to design this tool uh, something that you know, uh, say I would like to bring around, carrying around. When I, I received the first prototype, there was uh, there was interesting uh, uh, because I started testing out, and the water completely you know opened my mind to say, whoa, this is different. This is not something I was expecting because uh, my first take was okay. How I can bring the Bulgarian bag or the sand bag around? Sand is not always available, you know, to put sand if you so go. So for, for, for people listening to a Bulgarian bag, so let's give a little kind of like background perspective. Yeah. Because some people have no idea that are going to listen to this, have yeah. no idea what a Bulgarian bag is. What, what is this guy talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, it's still yeah. kind of like a mystery. So I'll give my description of a Bulgarian bag. Sure. You, you can kind of clean it up sure. too because I'm not a Bulgarian bag expert. But when it comes to uh, fitness, the way I understand it is like, you know, you have your dumbbells, you have your barbells, things that are just really yeah. solid movements, right? You lift them, you kind of... Sure. But when you involve something like sand or or water, and it has more of a fluid motion, so a Bulgarian bag is essentially a like a bean bag. Yeah. Like a, a bean bag that's kind of like a large boomerang shape. Yeah, sure. And then you swing it around, you do all these different movements, and, and because there's so much mobility involved, you can move different ways. You can do things you couldn't do with a dumbbell or yeah. a barbell. And that activates essentially more muscles. It also makes it so that you can change the weight based on how strong you are. If you're just getting into Absolutely. fitness, you could you could just start with something very basic, a little bit of sand, or in your case with the hydrocore, a little bit of water. And as you get stronger, as you strengthen up, as you learn things, and you, you, I think you have some like Instagram videos, programs sure. people can plug into this, so you could add sure. water or with the bulk of your bag, you sure. add sand. So, so you have... What? So the, there's the Bulgarian bag, the bean bag, boomerang, like yeah. any level of fitness. It's, I feel like it's like old school, obviously it's Bulgarian, you know, yeah. old school, big strong man sure. stuff. So what's the difference between between that, right? And and how you started <clears throat> using water, why you started using water and what that means. Well, already the difference between, let's say, from sandbag and dumbbell is huge. Or, or, you know, the, the, the possibility to uh, perform more dynamic movement, more tridimensional movement, okay, so more rotational movement, that's huge. Because, you know, if we have, like, you know, so many joints, 
Mm -hmm. and bones in our body we are designed to move in many different way right okay. and you know uh, the the what you do in the gym sometimes you just move in one plane or two plane like you do squat you do always like this up and down mm -hmm. sideway rarely back backward probably never right so in rotation completely rotation of your spine probably never because you know you load so much that can be kind of you know uh, dangerous like imagine like why you snatch rotate your spine yes. right you know with 200 pounds that that can can happen so those tools where you work with uh, 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 very relative load i want to say like it's not like you know 200 pounds we're talking like you know uh, 20 pounds 30 pounds at the max you see hydro core max can contain 30 pounds already change the game you can perform more rotational movement like uh, the bulgarian may can do this span the circle around your body you can uh, control more is not like dangerous because if you fall to on your feet it's not a kettlebell imagine 30 pound of kettlebell on your foot but 30 pound of of uh, sand on your foot doesn't do anything if you jam yourself not do anything but going like you know it's kind of you know an evolution of this tool of the sandbag and the kettlebell is a hydro cord we come in the water so even easier to use to adjust the weight because you put water remove water water is everywhere and uh uh, is this air inside, so it's a cushioning. So even if you slam on the floor, jam yourself, even like, you know, more forgiving tool. That's why a lot of kids love it to use it because they feel like, you know, it's a toy. It's not like a training tool, right? They have fun with that. Uh, going back at the water, why the water, right? So that's the first question. So why have to put the water? That's, a, you know, my first take was, okay, adjusting the amount of water so I can transport around and then go from, you know, zero pound to 40 pounds and, and uh, you know, easy, right? I don't need to buy 10, just with one, you know, I, I do all I need to do it. But again, when I received the first one, I saw that the dynamic of the water was a game changer because, uh, you know, the water keep moving even if you stop the motion of your body right if there's any other object you stop the object you hold in your hand stop with you right it doesn't still like wobbling or moving around right with the water inside that was the the crazy things you know for a much control you can put into the 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 movement Oh, the water always will keep moving, right? It's like a, a walking on a solid floor and walking on a slack line. Even if the slack line is like one inch from the floor, it's hard, right? Yeah. So that's the thing. So and then my the the benefit of this is you see a lot of trainer probably at the gym doing like a use a dumbbell uh, on top, standing on top of the bozo ball, right? Or right or one foot, right? And I mean, that's fine, you know, you can do that kind of stuff all day, but uh, you still have a, a, a no uh, uh, um, ground support, right? In the case of a hydro core, the instability is inside the object you're holding, is not under your feet, so you're very safe. And then going back, like to my friend here, he's 73, putting a person that's 73 years old, which, you know, already like struggle with stability, you know, core stability on an unstable object, and then let him do like curls with like 20 pounds dumbbell. I mean, he, first of all, he can fall from that thing and or lose the control of the dumbbell and injure himself. But, you know, with the hydro core, you can do that all day because you still have full base uh, support, but the, the control is inside the object. You can drop the object anytime, nothing going to happen, right? So you're still safe. So the dynamic of the water, the dynamic of the water creates completely another uh, understanding and awareness of your body. That's the interesting thing. You're more aware of the movement. The struggle as a trainer we have all the time when we have to train someone, engage your core. How many times probably a trainer told you, engage your core? Oh, you have to engage your core. Oh, tighten your core. It's all in the core. People don't know what fucking is the core. Is the abs? What is it, the core? What is the core, mm. right? It's all like this mysterious, you know, thing that nobody understands, like the G-spot on girls, right? You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, Wait, it's a good thing. Maybe G-spot and core. Myth. I think no? that one's real. But <laughs> that's real. The core know? might be more mysterious than that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, but that's the thing, you know. Uh, but... Um, if you have an, an object that creates instability, mm -hmm. you understand right away that you have to tighten yourself, you have to create more control and be aware of what you're doing. So you don't move 
fast. Sometimes we start slow motion and we start going fast because we spade out, space out, right? You know, we start like, you know, okay, looking at the phone or thinking other stuff. But with water inside the object, you have to always be focused on the movement you're doing and mm. you always be aware of how you perform the movement. So that's the important thing. So while you create a solid foundation in your body, like you know any type of movement you perform with the back, even just squat, lunges, or press, simple things. You don't need to go do crazy stuff. I'm performing, probably you see my video, right? Uh, already you have better understanding how your body needs to move, how to engage the core. It happened right away, instantly, because uh, it's like you standing there, I come into you, I push you, and then the first time I push you, you say, okay, I was not ready for that. But second time I come to you and say, hey, I will push you now in a second. So you're ready, what are you doing? You lower down, you create a better base support, and you're more aware of what you have to control this force coming to you. That's the same thing happening. It happened organically. So, I, I mean, uh, we were talking about before, uh, always say the same thing, always say the same thing, right? When, when you talk to people, but in the case of, of training people, I don't have to say the same thing. I, I mean, really, I don't remember when the last time I told, I told a, a, a client, engage your core. Because soon I put like, you know, a bag in his hand, he, right away he realized what he have to do. There's no more like, you know, talking. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if I explain, you know. No, that's pretty, you did a good job. So, and I think about a couple of things. One is you have, you have kids using it. So you, you essentially can use this from being a really small human all the way up to Absolutely. being, uh, you know, further down the, the life spectrum. And one of the things that, that's fascinating, like I have a bunch of different kettlebells, right? And some of them are five pounds. Some of them are 72 pounds. So oh, 72. I got, the big, I got the big foot okay. one, baby. Oh, yeah, I got the <laughs> okay. whole. I, I, yeah, I want, I want it to come back out with those Star Wars ones, man. I can't wait. I, I love having that collection. But uh, what's neat about this is, I mean, you, you literally just brought one over here. So... Yeah. You can travel with this. You oh, can yeah. It's packed. Put, you can and, pack and, it. And you can be, and I feel like, uh, I may not look very strong lately. I feel like the pandemic shed about 15 pounds of muscle <laughs> off of me, but I, I know I'm pretty strong. And we went out and did an ocean workout. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And that, just having some water in that. Uh, I'm not looking because the, <laughs> it, I can see the... the oh, the, you the, like that I was painting? looking what it was. That yeah. thing's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, it's actually on papyrus. It's a hunting and, uh, scene from it's, Egypt. It's, uh, it's King Tut. Yeah. Yeah, and the guy uh, is Egyptian that, that made that. And then I went and got it framed and everything. But it's on papyrus paper. Yeah, it's pretty... Pretty awesome. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. No, that's cool. I, <laughs> because I, I was trying to figure out from there what, what I'm looking <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, that's one of my favorite. That's why it's right there. It's, uh, I, I love that piece. Um, I've actually got somebody that's doing a, a piece of art for me right now. I don't know if she's going to be done today to bring it over. but Oh, the, the guy from Sora told me to you, you, if you DM him, he will send you more, uh, you know, so right came out with the spine thing. Uh, I've, got, I've got the spine one, but if, oh, he's, got, if he's got other ones, uh, okay, yeah, yeah well, well, you can DM me. I'll okay. give him the thing. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Bring it on, Dave. Thanks, man. <laughs> We'd love to have you on. We'll do it remotely since you're on the other coast. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you come down, I'll bring, I'll bring him over. Yeah. Super yeah. cool. Yeah, sorry if I interrupted you. No, yeah. man, you're, you're good. Go. So uh, we were talking about essentially hydro core. let's talk a little bit about hydro reach oh yeah hydro reach project and uh yeah hydro reach project is something that you know make me very proud and uh you know sometimes i believe that was uh, the main purpose of all this you know uh, i think that the hydro core was just in between Mm -hmm. but the, my main purpose was the HydroReach project. HydroReach project, basically, what I did, I modified, you know, HydroCore. I made a bigger version of HydroCore, and uh, I attached a water filter here. Okay. This is a water filter can be attached to the HydroReach bag and uh, will be used to purify the water inside the bag. So HydroReach uh, is a, a nonprofit project that will take over probably a couple months uh, worldwide uh, we will distribute this bag and help people to transport water not just transport water but also purify water i mean probably this is something that people don't understand because you know it's easy you go to the bathroom get water you know go there make a coffee everything but it's people that to uh, uh, every morning wake up walk like miles and miles from four sometimes eight miles a day to 
uh, get water to bring back to the village, wherever they live. And most of the time, their water is not uh, possible to drink. It's polluted, so you need to purify the water. So that's why, you know, you mind if we all this, so I show you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please, go so for it. Is, uh, this is uh, just the hydro, I mean, a very... So, and I'm just going to, I'm going to, because some people are listening and yeah. some people may be watching. So the hydro core is much smaller. Than yeah, it's very small, tool. yeah. This is what you're specifically talking about is there's a large, we, we live in, you and I live in California. Yeah. We have a water problem yeah, a little yeah, bit probably. sometimes, but... Most of North America, probably most of the people that are listening to this, I know I have some friends yeah. in like Italy, Germany, places like that that may listen as well, but we don't think about water as much because it's so convenient. So you're talking about places on earth where this is really common, the struggle to get pure water. Yeah. Do you know by any chance what, like what percentage of the planet still works? I have this? some data on my uh, website and uh, it's, a, it's a random because, you know, you will be surprised of uh, there is uh, places, you know, that probably in U.S. they don't have uh, 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 water available in the mountain or whatever. Like Michigan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so there, is a, there is so many places in the world they really need, you know, this uh, product here. Uh, mostly, you know, obviously, you know, what we see mostly like Africa, you know, uh, like we have, for example, the, the first project we'll run will be in Tanzania. We're going to distribute 300 back there. Mm -hmm. India, Nepal. Uh, there is a lot of country. Brazil. You've been in Brazil. Yeah. yeah. I had to get water delivered. I mean, I had water there, but it was my apartment. The water actually came from like a well structure yeah. where when it rained, it filled it up. So that Absolutely. was my sink and shower water, yeah. which was hilarious because... I learned how to take a cold shower. It was really good. Yeah. But if I wanted drinking water, I was making a phone call and there was a guy that would deliver on a bike and that was my that was my drinking water. There was yeah. no clean Exactly. Yeah. Some some people, I mean, I've, I lived in Brazil. I've been in places like the Dominican yeah. Republic, you know, uh, a lot of places to visit and see mostly see people carrying bucket of water, right? Mm -hmm. And imagine carrying a bucket of water. Now they do for fun during Spartan race, right? How hard is that? <laughs> I, you, I, you and I might have even joked about this before. Um, like we talk about fasting a lot, you know, oh, as yeah, like yeah. a nutrition thing. And, and I was joking with somebody, a couple people, and I said, you know, in most of the world, they call that just Ooh. like a regular day. Oh, you know, we are super oh, yeah. um, fortunate to have to actually have to make fasting like a. That's, that's kind of, you know, funny if you think. Like yeah. you, you starve yourself. There's people, they forced to starve but now uh, fasting is so big everybody does that it's so healthy for you go tell that to a person that don't have food right yeah it's just crazy right it's it, it's good to get perspective back to our first part right yeah, just yeah. sometimes we really have to be super appreciative of what we have oh because, yeah because uh, most of the world is, is not like not shouldn't say most there's a good percentage of the world that yeah. still lives a different way yeah, but going back to the Hydro Reach project, you know, this is something that uh, uh, I opened this collaboration with a company in South Africa. Okay. So they will actually take over the project and start distributing worldwide. They're very well connected. They do this for 20 years, distributing buckets and filters and providing other, like, you know, uh, uh, staff or tools they need the... Uh, People need to, you know, to uh, purify water or transport water. They love my idea. They love my project. So my goal, you know, uh, is to eliminate the bucket. People, I want people, this is the best way to transport the water. If you try to carry two buckets of water for a mile, your hands are sewing and tired. You have to stop probably every 10 minutes after that. Uh, yeah, it's Probably just compresses yeah. oh, your spine shoulder bit, jerking down, down, you know, your yeah, spine yeah. get like, you know, hunchback and everything. It's, there's a lot of discomfort. I, I actually think so. I don't know if you can see. I have like a massive, uh, see my left shoulder here, how big it is. So yeah. as a kid, uh, I grew up, we didn't have like a car even. So I even at eight years old, nine years old, like I was the kid I, of the family. I would yeah. go walk to the grocery store. Oh, yeah. And carry yeah, grocery, grocery bag. bag. Yeah. Two miles. All oh, these freaking groceries. hard is that? I legitimately think oh, that's yeah. part of some of my like, hard. muscles. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's just crazy, right? Yeah. So imagine like doing this every day for the rest of your life. Yeah. Most of the people that do this, uh, like, you know, kids and girls, because the men go hunting or do other stuff, right? 
And uh, so what does happen? You know, being busy every day to do this all day long means that you cannot go to school. A woman that cannot, like, you know, provide an income or kind of, you know, you know they have dreams. They want to do stuff, right? And they can't because that's the only thing they have to do. Like, you know, uh, carrying water all day. You see, you probably have seen, like, you know, uh, buckets of water on the head, like, you know, uh, balancing on the head and, you know, kids transporting, you know, buckets of water all day. So this will help to make the process faster and, you know, easier, right? Because uh, you don't have to think just like going from A to B in a very straight and liner surface. Sometimes you have to climb, uh, go up and down, across, you know, things. Uh, the problem about, you know, uh, transporting water, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of problem related to that. It's not just the water itself. It's not just water. I mean, the, probably that's the, the easy thing, right? Uh, huge problem is human trafficking. Most of the time during the, the, this, this walk, kids, women are targeted from, uh, you, know, um, you know, human traffickers and, wow. you know, kidnapped, raped. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of things get going on. It's not just limited to the fact that you have to transport the water. Hmm. It means that uh, this is faster. You can run with that on your back. Uh, you don't have to hold it with your hand. Uh, you can uh, go faster. It means if you go faster, you have more time to play, to go to school, to do other stuff, other tasks, right? You know, other things you can do every day. You cannot do it. There's never enough time in a day. We, we know that. We, <laughs> oh, oh, fuck, man, I wish I had two hours more, right? But, you know, imagine a person that the only task you have to do all day long is transporting water. There's not, never enough time to do that. The, the word that comes to mind is, is technology, because oftentimes when we think of technology, we, if you ask 10 people, hey, when I say technology, what's something you think of? You hear phone, you hear computer, you hear electric car. Oh, yeah. Once upon a time, fire was technology, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. We used to chew for like eight hours a day, then we could heat it up, then we could yeah. chew a little faster. And, and this is a technology, essentially, that can help a large amount of people Absolutely. on the planet be more productive. Yeah. So the thing is, because of the shape, he, he is, um, is, uh, is, is cool because it can go on top of horses, goat. It's the most of the country that transport the water using, okay. you know, horses or so mule or donkey, goats or llama, like in Peru. <laughs> and so this is cool because you can put a lot on top of an animal because of the shape, right? Uh, uh, th with this project here, we have a company that already, you know, not just the one that will distribute the bag, which is also useful for disaster relief. So the same company provide, for example, when there was a, uh, in Puerto Rico, the, the hurricane, they went there to, you know, give filters and other system to purify water right away. If you don't have water in uh, the first three days after disaster, people die because they don't have water. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's uh, the thing. Um, so um, there's other company that will uh, uh, help us on this project here to uh, say finance or whatever donate. Uh, one of the company is a slash rope, which is like a make like you know jumping rope. They make a, I don't know if you've seen this flow with the rope. Sli like is it called slash rope? Slash ropes, slush yeah. Rope. Okay. Another company they, they they produce this. It's, you know David Weck. Mm -hmm. You've seen, well David Weck is the inventor of the Bose bowl. Okay. Well, they created this uh, flow using ropes. I will show you one day. It's very interesting. Instead okay. of jumping rope, yeah. you do more flow stuff. Huh. It's very interesting. Uh, it's very good for your mobility, coordination, everything. It's very fun. I'll send you the link so you can see her. She's amazing. So uh, Slash Rope will uh, donate rope, and also w she will donate money. The reason of the rope is... Uh, the rope can be attached. If you've seen at the bottom of the bag, there is two ring, okay. like the hydro core, right? Yeah. And those to secure the bag around your waist. So you're secure with a rope, right? So, but my idea is uh, instead of using any type of rope, why we don't use jump rope? Because any third world country you go, you see kids play on the street with rope, like jumping rope, right? Mm -hmm. They do all the time. So the idea is to bring this jump rope. So we donate with the bag a jumping rope. The kids can use it because the bag needs like a rope to be hanged upside down to purify the water using the filter. Mm. So like this, with this jumping rope, where you don't use the bag, 
you can use the jumping rope to play. So the kids can use the jumping rope to play. So uh, when we got to go in some country, we're going to bring the rope. They're going to come along with these uh, fitness trainers. They will show kids how to use the rope in many different ways, create all fun stuff with the rope. Wow. So it'll be interesting to get involved, trainer. And so that's the cool things about this Hydro Reach project because we will get involved a lot of trainers, like uh, people in the fitness industry. Uh, there is, uh, for example, Dave from Sorite that he want to uh, uh, be part of this, help. Uh, the Brett Belt, they want to be part and, you know, and uh, help it out in some way. Um, there is other company. There's this company here. I'll get this for you. I'll put this for you. <laughs> it's a root. This for you. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, let me see what, what I give you. So it's a, it's a water bottle. Ah. And, uh, here Check this thing out. So it's a water bottle. It's yeah. called the root. root. Oh, and that's what you have there. And it has yeah. ropes. So this is my sponsor. It. And uh, it's from Italy. Uh, ah. Design is Italian design. And uh, they will help also to finance the project. So what they do, ah. if you buy this... Uh, uh, water bottle you can uh, bring to the gym, you know, whatever, you know, I'll attach to my bike all the time. And, um, you know, they will uh, finance, you know, part of the project. So there will there a lot of companies that jumping in more and more and more. So they will be interesting. Possibly, you know, I'll see, we had a, a conversation with Onnit, possibly Onnit will jump on board. Uh, but, you know, things will happen like, you know, slowly. So... Um, the interesting thing, you know, talking about, you know, this, this water thing, you That's know, cool. sometimes Thank little you. things in your life cannot just change your life, but can change uh, other, other people's life around you, right? One thing that I committed was since the pandemic started is always carry my water, never buy plastic. So always I have with me that one. I never buy plastic anymore. I refill, refill all the time. And another thing I commit, riding my bike every day. So now it's like almost like, you know, a year or more that I'm riding my bike every day almost. And whatever I go, I go with my bike, you know, and uh, never like, you know, uh, buy uh, plastic anymore. That's so that's what I'm doing. So imagine if each one of us will go around with, uh, with some of this. Do you see a blue whale behind you over there on a... Oh, yeah. Grab that thing oh, real oops. quick. So I don't know if you know this guy. He lives Whoa, here, whale. too. Okay. Squeeze that squeeze that button there Wait. in the middle. So this is my buddy Malta. In fact, uh, maybe, I don't know if you two know each other, but... I don't know. Uh, what, what, what to squeeze? Oh, here, down here. So get, guess, what this is, <laughs> guess what this is made out of? Uh, recycle plastic? It's made out of recycled oh, plastic. Oh, that's awesome. Maybe we can collaborate Dude, on this you can, here. Yeah, I would love to. I probably... See? That's awesome. Whale. So you sell these things and then uh, kind of uh, help whales? Yeah, man. He lives over here in Pacific Beach, oh, too. I'd awesome. love to get you two connected. So. Put in touch, man. Maybe yeah. you can find a way to open a collaboration, man. There you go. I love it. That's awesome. See, I, I, like, I like this thing. You know, I always believe in connection. I always believe uh, be good to one another and things will happen. You know, I'm good to you now without expecting anything is going to change and things will happen maybe in 10 years. Maybe you will introduce me someone that you know be uh, uh, help, will help for this project here. You know, I, I always believe that. And, and then you know, lately I was thinking how many times this happened to me. Like you know, the other day I was telling to a friend, I was a uh, a guy contacted me. A guy contacted me on uh, on uh, Instagram, and because uh, he liked the hydrocore and everything, and. Uh, and then uh, I saw his profile. It was like, you know, a, 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 uh, looks like, a, you know, a new uh, fitness company starting in, uh, in Australia. I was looking for a distributor in Australia for HydroCore. So he contacted me and said, hey, uh, you know, are you interested, you know, about distribution, blah, blah. I say, yeah. I uh, say, by the way, you, your name is Maurizio. I say, yeah, because, you know, he obviously don't know he's behind the page, right? And then he told me, oh, uh, four years ago, I was in San Diego. And you showed me HydroCore for the first time. It was not on the market. And this guy worked in the medical industry. Yeah. So it's nothing to do with fitness, just passion for fitness, right? And now he's opening his own uh, factory, a company, producing a fitness product in Australia. And probably we're going to do something together in, uh, in Australia. So uh, the guy, you know, when he contacted me, you know, he came and uh, said, hey, I, I want to see... You know, you see your personal trainer in San Diego. Can you show me some stuff? Blah blah. I say, yeah, come over. And then back then, I for the first time I show him a hydro core. It was not even a deal with on it anything. And then uh, he loved it. 
and he want me to pay. You say, hey, it's a dollar for your time. Say, ah, don't worry, you know, it's okay, you know, <laughs> don't worry. And then, you know, after 40 years now, probably you will be distributed hydrocore in Australia. Who knows, right? It, it seems like that's happened a couple of times. You shared earlier how you and, uh, and Soul Ride and, and Breath Belt and everybody were part of this class that had a, an influence and an impact in the future. What, so, some, so with hydrocore, hydro reach, the things you're doing, are you looking for, for more people to get involved and be a so part of So that? that's what I'm saying, because a lot of people, I create an Hydro Reach Project mm -hmm. page on Instagram, Hydro Reach Project. Uh, that's the thing people ask me all the time, because people see the project and they see, man, this is cool. I want to help. How I can help? You know, the money, how I can help? You can help in any way. One thing that I always say to them, and that's the easy thing you can do it. Very easy, very simple things to do it. You have HydroCore, right, Derek? Mm -hmm. So it's there, right? Sitting there. You yeah. use hydrocores time time, right? Yeah. So make this. Uh, get a piggy bank, okay? A little piggy bank, you know, put on your desk. Every time you work out with hydrocore, put a dollar inside the piggy bank. At the end of the year, probably you will be able to sponsor one or two bag, hmm. right? Easy. This is simple. It's something you can do. You can put 50 cents or whatever, whatever, you know, amount of money you decide to put. So every time you work out with hydrocore, you are helping hydro reach project. That's the thing that I say to uh, people. They, they use HydroCore, but they, they don't know how to help me, okay, or help the project at least. So do this. Just get a little piggy bank, put like your side of your desk, you know, whatever, in your house, and every time you do a little workout, clink, put something inside. In one year, probably you will be able to sponsor, you know, a bag or two, right? Another way to help, your time. I think time is the most important, precious things a human being can give to another human being, right? Your time. Time to talk, time to listen, time to help, right? To do something small, say, hey, man, I need to do this. I don't know how to do it. Can you help me out? And uh, this, if you, when you do it in a way that is, is organic, is genuine, is not like, you know, you don't want anything in exchange for friends. Sometimes you can do these things. You always have to ask for money or be like, you know, pissed because, oh, you're wasting my time. Nobody wasting your time. Mm -hmm. If someone needs your time, because you really need your time. It's not wasting your time, right? So uh, you can come with us. You can come with us in Tanzania, bring the bag there right? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful place, beautiful country. You can do some good thing, just come in there and then uh, help us to bring the bag. So this can be something interesting to do it all together with fitness trainer. Imagine you think you're going to be ready for that, to walk into the desert with 115 degrees carrying like 40 pounds of water for 60 miles probably. Uh, I think you're ready for that. that you train hard, 72 two pounds that there. Gets me that's a, that's a something to challenge. That's a challenge. That's something oh. to look into. If all the motherfucker cowbell you sh you <laughs> moving around all day, you're gonna bring you somewhere. Yeah. So that, and that and you're saying me or people in general can do this, but yeah. honestly, I I I'm, I'm one of those people. Like I went on a buffalo hunt last year, right? So I went out to. Um, oh, so remember that you were carrying oh, that that motherfucker on your back. Dude, and, that's, and I don't <laughs> I remember that. weigh it, but it was you know 80, 90 pounds of meat. And as, as much as the the hunt part is, I mean, I didn't I didn't shoot it. There are some really like mm -hmm. professional hunters that uh, were part of our group that asked me to go. But the pack out when you talk about having eighty pounds, maybe ninety. I don't know how much it was. Yeah. A, a lot of meat up and down these hills there are parts where you just want to quit your legs actually there's a, the cape of the buffalo which is like the skin and everything and, and i know some people listen to this might go oh my gosh they killed an animal no. uh there's a lot of actually research and history and, and need for that and, and why it happened oh absolutely what you're supposed to yeah. do so it's kind of a, a whole topic on its own but uh I, I was trying to help the guy who was carrying like the head and the cape part of it essentially the the fur of the outside and uh, and that must have weighed like 120 or 30 pounds. The my like I couldn't understand. I'm like, oh man, this guy's really tough. Like this is this big, mm -hmm. massive like uh, power strength builder dude named Casey, and and he's like taking a break. And I'm like, I'll help you out, man. And mentally, I'm like, I'm in. Let's do this. Put that thing on my back. Walk. 50, 75 <laughs> like, I'm yards. Done. I'm done. My legs just stopped working. <laughs> it was like here and my body yeah. wanted to do it, but there was no physical, but I love that stuff because I want to put it down, let my body recover, yeah. do it again. There's but li listen, you said important thing. Oh, I want to quit. You, uh, you can quit. If you fucking care, leave it there, go home, fuck you, I go drink a glass of wine next to the fireplace, right? They cannot quit. 
They have yeah. to carry the water all day, every day for the rest of their life. They cannot quit. They can think about that. So you see, like, you know, what, what we do here, like, you know, training at the gym hard, snatching and things, man, that need real, you know, training. Being in the desert, walking, carrying water up and down, that hard. So that's what I'm challenging you guys. If you want to come with me in Tanzania and do this thing, you know, just donate your time. Help us to bring the bag there, wherever we're going to go in different countries, you know, probably in the next few years. And uh, we're going to uh, do this. We're going to carry the bag, the first bag. What happened? <laughs> I hope it's still recording. I'm going to check, but keep just going. Just stand by. By the way, is this Carry open, the first bag. Is this an open invite? Yeah, anyone. Anyone who want to do it, you know, we'll be more than happy to do that, man. That's, that's uh, is an open invite. Anyone that want to come with uh, us to Tanzania, bring in the bag. More we are is better. We want to, we want to, the first thing we want to raise awareness. That's the, the, and then you can uh, raise awareness if you have a lot of voices. The most important thing about this, why I want people to come over, this is very important to understand. Because I can talk to you about, you know, oh, the water is important, the kids the struggle, they die, everything. Okay, we're done, it's finished. If you come with me, you're going to see it. You're going to understand what I'm talking about. And you're going to bring back your experience. You're going to share your experience. So when you talk to a person, you know, you, the, that person will see your passion. It will see, like, will feel your struggle, will feel everything, your emotions when you went there. Probably you're going to share, like, you know, the happiness of bringing a thing that will change people's life for uh, years and years, right? So this is, I think, the best thing you can bring back is your experience, your emotion, than just telling or convincing a person to donate some money for a water bag that you don't underst even understand what it is. Because the problem when, uh, we, I mean, I don't know, probably you donate money all the time, right? You know, for this, for that, for that. But it ends there, right? If you don't leave, you don't part of it, you don't get passionate about it. You know, there's a lot of uh, organization I donate money, most like child trafficking. I'm very sensitive on that. But, you know, I would like to get involved and see how, what I can do really on, on first line, what I can do it for, you know, I want to touch it. I want to see it. I want to punch a fucking, you know, child trafficker in the face. That's what I want to do it, right? You know, but, you know, in this case, I'll give you the opportunity to get, come with me and see if all the workout you're doing is worth for something, or you're going to cry man. like a little bitch when you <laughs> like, I want to quit. <laughs> no, I think, that's, I think that's really powerful. The yeah. personal experience and uh, the challenge of, of helping others, you know, this, this goes back to what we were talking about with fasting earlier. We do these things yeah. optionally. I, take, yeah. I don't have to take a cold shower. I have, yeah. I have warm water. Yeah. You know, I don't have to fast. I have, man, it is so fun. What do you say is so fun? It is, I mean, it's, it's interesting because yeah. there's people that take cold shower always because they don't have hot water. That's, there's people that don't eat probably for two or three days because they don't have food. Yeah. And then we doing these fucking things that we brag on social media that we are so fucking <laughs> strong, taking the whim off cold bath. Huh? There, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> there's people going yeah, like, that, oh, oh, look what I did. There's people in Russia, they take cold bath every day because they, they don't have hot water. And, you know, they don't eat for three days because they don't have food. And then we brag about this shit, you know. But what do you do with that? Where are you going with that? Well, and, and so, and one, there's the, the ego thing, right? Bragging about it, look how cool I am. And there's a lot of words around that. Uh Two is uh, the reason I personally do it too, and I, I, don't, I talk about it more from this perspective. I like this perspective of like we're doing it optionally. I do it because I know it makes me stronger. Like my time in Brazil, forcing myself to take a cold shower because if I didn't, I would get a fungus. You know? oh, like, oh yeah, that that made it's a necessity. Me, it made me mentally stronger. Yeah. I work with a lot of Canadians right now. And there's a, a Canadian woman yesterday that sent me a text message. Hey, if I don't talk to you next week, it's because. I froze to death and it's negative. I think she said negative 33 degrees wow. uh, Fahrenheit Celsius. Yeah. I know she was kind of mixing it up for me, but they have a, a, a cold warning and this is just in, this is in Canada. This isn't that far. I mean, we're in Southern California. It's in the middle of winter oh, yeah. and it looks like yeah, we can go. Yeah, 965. I was all bundled up with yeah. my tank, you know, on the bike. <laughs> it's 65 today. It was like, oh, it's so cold, yeah. right? And it's just, it's like, but we, I think we have a choice 
in terms of how we embrace things that make us stronger because uh, one, it's you don't want to take advantage of or, or not appreciate or be grateful for the luxuries we do have. They, they can make us soft. They can make us detached from what it's like to be a human. I think this pandemic thing really opened our eyes to, oh, yeah, you know, we, we've been in, a, in the U.S., not everybody, but a large portion of people uh, across the world, Europe, have been very, very blessed these last 10 years since the last financial crisis in terms of what's possible. Not everybody. I know some people that struggled too, but it, it's important, I think, to have these reminders that the uh, world is really tough. When, when I hear people talk about going hiking and doing these things, I heard this somewhere once and it stuck with me and it was like, you like to go hiking because uh, we killed all the animals that used to roam that part, right? And that really yeah. stuck with me. I was like, that's hilarious. Like, you you wouldn't have went hiking up in the mountains here, you know, 200 years ago, unless you had your, you know, weapons to fight off the... Yeah, and let's say you had to go bear. search for food for days or doing, yeah. I mean, accomplish a task. You know, we do, yeah. We do, yeah. We How do. new is a freezer? Yeah, That exactly. wasn't around 500 years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're... Well, I'm thinking of like, you know, me coming from Italy, a lot of stuff they, you know, here is, is uh, I mean, they had forever. I mean, remember this, l little things, right? Like the, free, the, the fridge, the TV, things like that. When I was a kid, you know, I mean, we, we really didn't have the fridge, you know? <laughs> like my mom was going grocery all the time. I remember the first fridge we had it. Oh, we used to listen to radio. I mean, I was a kid. I mean, this aged me a lot, but, you know, but I'm coming, I'm talking about South Italy. You know, we used to listen to radio. That's what we used to do, you know. And, uh, but uh, used to go like with the Vespa with my dad, like four people, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, with a bicycle. I mean, th those little things that, you know, other things we do for fun now because it's fun to go hiking and things like that. We don't think, imagine if we do the same thing uh, I'm telling people to do for a hydro reach project. Let's say every time you use a hydro core, put a, 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 some money apart. Imagine if you do with uh, um, fasting. So every day you fast, you put money apart, and you donate the money to people they want, you know, uh, food. They want real food. Or, uh, or every time you take a cold bath, why don't put, like, you know, $10 aside and donate to people? They don't have hot water. They need it, something like that, right? I mean, that would be cool. That, I mean, at least a fucking useful for something this bullshit right you know uh, than yeah. just like you know i'm doing because it makes me stronger mentally <laughs> would make it stronger what <laughs> for being in line at starbucks you know making stronger for what you don't have to go hunting or yeah. defend yourself or do anything right you can go to bonds and buy things why do you really need to go hunt to carry the the thing on your shoulder yeah. No, but for the other guy, he love it. He is necessity. He eat the food. He eat, that's what he does every day. You have a big freezer full of the meat, and then he eat the stuff almost every day, probably. When we first started talking earlier, too, we were talking about kind of like being positive and having positive people around. And so do you think that, that doing tough things, because, I mean, I've seen people that... Uh, are you know kind of more of a complain type person about doing tough things but do you think that that helps you when you when you force yourself to do hard things can can make you more positive or make you have better perspective about well, the world? But, but the hard things is fine but they have to have a, a second purpose you know i mean uh, uh, now for example you know i will start my process of working out hard and uh, you know i will do like you know altitude training also go to big bear spend more time there probably before we leave to tanzania i will do like you know for uh, for a couple of weeks spend time there because i have a purpose now you know what i'm saying mm. so everything i'm doing now i want to propose the fact that i'm taking care of myself i'm taking care of myself because i want to be present for my daughter longer that's what I'm doing. That's my purpose. I don't fucking care about looking good and this and that, you know. But, you know, if I'm training the way I'm training and working out wisely, then just beat my, the shit of myself, you know, like more mobility. My type of training is changing with age, with understanding, like more mobility, more like, you know, uh, uh, really take care of myself the way it's supposed to do. Like the man that we interviewed before, right? 
uh, uh, 73, go back, you know, in the thing, the daughter was so proud of him, he you know, that, that's, that's, that's great. Right. Yeah. And you know, that's what I'm doing. I, don't, I mean, I want to, I want to be 73 and uh, healthy and move and be able to walk my daughter down the aisle. That's my freaking purpose. It's not the other purpose. That's why I'm working out now. Okay, and then if I to start working out hard for the next three, four months, because I want to go to Tanzania, which, you know, the guy that's there, he, he take care of the logistic, he's going to bring us on top of the Kilimanjaro wow. for, uh, for three days, four days, like hiking on top of Kilimanjaro, which is one of the hardest hike ever going up there because of the altitude changing and there's, there's a lot of things going on because you go from zero to 4,000, just crazy. That's what I want to work in out, walk into the desert. So that's why I like working out outside, not working out in the gym, not working out in a nice environment. The, I think, you know, always, uh, you don't need to replicate anything. Like you say, oh, I'm going taking like the hot uh, yoga. You do a hot yoga. Oh, I love it, man. Yeah, yeah, it I mean, it's nice. Yeah, like... well, yeah, it's totally fine. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's totally yeah. fine to do things that make you feel good, you know, but... Uh, it, it get some kind of purpose in that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and, and for me, 100%, yeah. it's, it's uh, I mean, I don't have kids yet, right? But I, yeah. I know that stuff like that makes me feel better, puts me in a better mood, and I'll, I'll use my nieces and nephews as an example. Like, I love, I spend a lot of time <laughs> talking to my nieces and nephews, encouraging their art, things like that, and I feel like it puts me in a place mentally, you know, pushing myself to do these things that, like you said, you said present, and I, I think when you said it, you meant be around for a longer period of time, when I think of that, it, it means like be the best me and all of these hard things just seem to make me be a better person and I can do more, be more and and help more and just like love more yeah. a little bit yeah. in some ways too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you, I mean, uh, single dude, you know, you don't have any <laughs> worry about your life, right? You know, but you know, for, for my, my point yeah. of view, you know, I want to be there for my daughter. That's the main thing for me. It's huge. I want to be healthy. I mean, it, yeah, it's huge for me. It's, 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 that's what I want. I don't, I don't want to be an old man like be pushed down the aisle f for her, right? And, uh, you know, that's this Hydro Rich project is really something. Like I told you before, I think that, you know, sometimes you, you st slowly start to believe that, you know, all the things that happen in my life, it happened because of this project. I think they, they, they finalize, they kind of go towards this project. You know, the reason why I'm in U.S., probably the reason, the reason why I'm in U.S., because my daughter had a heart condition, they need to get, you know, open heart surgery. That's the reason why I'm in U.S., you know. It's a bad reason. Thinking now, probably if never happened, this never happened. You know what I'm saying? There's things that, that con sometimes I connect the dots, even the bad things that happen, they go towards good things that can happen later on, right? Uh, I've, I've been reading the the Bible a bit lately, and I'm still yeah. So you posting a lot of stuff about the Bible? Yeah, I, mean, I kind I, of like almost like kind of making fun of you hey, sometimes. That's, that's cool because <laughs> I, you know I have a lot of friends like from different belief systems, and I'm just a really curious person. And so, uh, do you know the story of Joseph at all? Joseph, uh, the it's, father of Jesus. It's early on. Uh, maybe, no, the the Joseph before that. Oh, is it? No. Wait, I haven't got that far in the Bible. I don't know. What, <laughs> I've been reading a lot of history. This is one of the cool things too. Like a lot of my new books, newer books, I've been picking up are, are history books. And um, I had my neighbor the other day talking about, hey, when this all first happened, you were way too calm about the world catching on fire. And I said, yeah, I've been reading history, and so it's made me feel really not good. But it's made me realize that none of this is really new. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so story repeats all the time. Yeah, once you realize that, like, oh, this is the same as it was before. It just looks different. It just sounds different because it's a new year. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's yeah. new for us. And that helped me really get perspective yeah. and, and feel more comfortable with it, yeah. at least. I mean, not super excited about it, obviously. But so the story of Joseph, uh, the, and maybe he is a father. Do you just think you're right? But because uh, I know there's multiple Josephs in there. So, <laughs> no, just like sh uh, show oh, who, oh, who got, I'm talking. Oh, People yeah. see who's, talk, who's talking. And so, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so he, you know, essentially, it's the, the concept of you, you never know what's going to happen. Um, he, his brothers, like, sold him to Egypt as a slave, and he got, like, put in this prison, and then... Uh, had a prophecy and helped the Pharaoh and all the people really like saved Egypt from this famine. 
and then he forgave his brothers. But it was that uh, he said, basically, thank you to his brothers for selling me to Egypt yeah, man. and putting me in this prison because now I'm this great person. And it's the pain, the struggle, the stuff we go to, you, you, we always have a choice. And it's harder to say this when somebody's going through something really bad, or at least it's harder for some people to hear it. You know, if you just lost a limb or got in some crazy car accident, it's hard, you know, like what's the positive in that? But when you can find the, the strength in the struggle, you know, one of my things is that growing up, uh, I remember like standing in the food bank and being homeless and all this stuff. And I, I moved, I lived in like 20 cities or some crazy number. And what it really helped me is like, I feel like I'm super adaptable. You can put me oh, yeah. anywhere. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, hey, what's up? How's it going? I'm like, oh, and I, I don't think of things as so different that it Absolutely. causes this anxiety. That's what I always so. say. You know, if you, if you, I mean, what, what, what else can be it? more than rock bottom <laughs> you know what i'm saying you know <laughs> i mean when i was here i was cleaning uh, people home you know uh, i did you know personal training cleaning people home yeah. and you know struggle and things like that you know i've been digging hole at the cemetery with my dad it was fucking more or less than that wow. you know cleaning sh people shit and digging hole at the cemetery <laughs> well less than that you can possibly you know i mean i mean sure there's a lot of work you know less than that but uh, you know I can go back on that any time because I already did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and that's the things I'm seeing around. The people that they don't uh, uh, had any type of struggle. That's why for them it's hard to to do this type of things. Yeah. You know, it's so like you know, okay, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to work at McDonald's because I was a CEO of this. You know, but they never did it. Probably they never did it. They never tried. They never washed dishes. They never cleaned the bathroom or made the bed. You know, at home. That's why, you know, for them it's hard to, when something like this happened, like the pandemic and people without job, reinvent yourself, readapt, you know, uh, because, you know, you're already strong, so you can handle this, you know. But if you, if you, if you, nobody toughed you up, you know, nobody told you that life is not like this always, you know. Like, like you say, story repeats all the time, man. Did you see book? We had a pandemic, we had this, we had the city burned, we had all this stuff already happened, you know, human history. But you know what I feel like? That we never learn. We never fucking learn from history. That's the problem, you know? That always people get too comfortable, too confident. They see, oh, always gonna be better. No, man, in 50 years, it's gonna be shit again. They go up and down. They need to be ready when the shit all, you know, uh, hit the fan again. And what are you gonna do then, right? So just the people think that, you know, okay, when the pandemic is over, everything going to be fine forever. No, probably in 50 or 100 years, you know, they're going to be back something, you know, the Italian plug. <laughs> if you eat pasta, you die. You, um, <laughs> do you? Oh, no. The carb Don't plug. Don't get it started. Uh, do you, were you in politics? Yeah. Yeah, I was in politics in my hometown. Do you have a charger? Um, yeah, actually, there's a. Uh, it's yeah, over a second, here. Guys. It should be coming right out of the wall already. Do you see that um, white cord? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, you know what? Um, you can. There's a plug right up there. If you just kind of stick it under the oh, under yeah, the white okay. plug, you should so be able to. You can yeah, do it so over I if you want. See it. But uh, yeah, just let me close it, like Instagram. Oh, okay, guys, because of the low battery, I, I'll uh, close this one. But it was uh, nice to you who joined and you know was here. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> get so right Good. and the breath belt so the reason i was asking about politics is that well a couple of reasons i want to hear your your story on it but yeah i read this really cool this. thing about the five star movement in italy oh yes. yeah are you yeah, it was, uh, the, the same period that the, the movement started with the second time so. okay it's a really in for, for those of you listening that uh, aren't familiar with it. So what happened recently, maybe in the last 10, 11 years, um, had to do with a comedian and social media, and, and they call it social engineering. And so it was really interesting watching what happened in, in U.S. politics the last couple of years because uh, you, are you okay? Well, the plug doesn't work. Well, it should it should work. Sure. It might just be the uh, the yeah. charger. You have to kind of flip it over a little. I don't know. That cord gave me trouble this morning, but it... It should work pretty good. So, uh, 
you know, when people were freaking out about U.S. politics this year, because I had already read what happened in Italy with that five-star movement, I was like, oh, this is really inter interesting. Um, so they, they basically Mac. used uh, the Internet yeah. and social yeah. media to get all of these people that had, and some of them did have some political experience, but for the most part, a lot of them had never been in politics. Oh, yeah elected in a whole new political party so yeah that was very interesting because uh, that movement has actually started many many years ago and they start like you know very very organically you know uh just people connecting on the web and you know sharing uh, experience or point of view and you know here at the point they realized that uh, you need to do something to change things around i mean uh, i mean obviously you know I italian politics uh the same people for, I mean, also here in the U.S. up in the same thing, you know. I feel like they don't give sp any space to new brain, right? I mean, if you think about it, during the, the USA, uh, the presidential election, there were other candidates. Nobody knew about them. No the fucking they know. They just know Biden and Trump, right? There I were like, I think, four I, more. I voted for Kanye, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> kind of, you did? I so Good. did. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, you know, there were other smart uh, uh, young people, you know, that, but nobody gave attention to them, right? So uh, I think that's, you know, what happened uh, with the social media is very powerful uh, used to be very powerful, but now what happened is it's too much power to the people, too much voice to the people. You see a, a lot of like, you know, now uh, censoring, you know, uh, just post something there, they don't like it, they just censor, right? So, uh, but there was an interesting experiment. And then uh, back then I decided to uh, 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 create the group of, uh, of uh, guys in my town to run for uh, election. <clears throat> We didn't do good, but uh, uh, was a good start because uh, after f uh, four years, another group of young guys did the same thing, and now they are on a, a guy, a young dude, is a friend of mine, he's the mayor of town, they do great things, amazing things. But, you know, and, and again, connecting for what you do now, probably you're going to see a result later on, maybe not, uh, uh, you know, something that you know belong to you but you passed it, you probably give the energy the motivation to other people to do it right you know that's possibly what we did it we start something other people you know follow their legacy we say we failed but you know the people that come up there they they maybe did in a different way they saw what were our mistakes and you know they succeed and now you know my town they see amazing things happening right things that i wanted to do it and so going back to the the five star the movement there was there was great i mean i loved what they did it but it's hard to for people to uh change and see something new is scary right the problem about italy and i is this so there's difference i noticed between us and italy okay uh, the politics system, you know, uh, is there, eradicated from centuries, you know, years there. Uh, the vote, how they get the vote, they use, you know, the mafia, they use the Camorra, they, you know, it's all uh, colluded. What's a Camorra? Camorra is like mafia, but I it's not... Like in the, a jiu movie. Yeah, <laughs> Camorra. <laughs> Camorra. Yeah. No, Camorra is from uh, Naples. Mafia is from Sicily. Okay. There were different sections of uh, uh -huh. the name for the area where they are. For example, Drangheta is from uh, Sardinia. And we have Sacra Corona, which is from Puglia. Every area have a different name for the mafia, but mm. it's mafia at the end. And uh, uh, they colluded, but uh, in some way, it is funny because I've seen here, uh, for example, in Italy happen, uh, if I vote for you, you have to give me something in exchange. Maybe not today, maybe in 10 years. You have to do something for my son, maybe, you know, uh, uh, find his job or, I don't know, whatever, uh, the post office. So help me to build uh, something on my garage that, you know, usually they don't let me or I need a special permission or spend a lot of money or wait years, right? A little, little bullshit. So the people are hooked for this little favor, little favor, mm. not for big things, not for like, you know, I'm going to make a million dollars because I'm going to dig uh, like the oil company there. No. So that's the way they hook like people to vote for other people, like little bullshit. Okay. Mm. Here in US, 
that's not happen because the system is not colluded at your level. If you go to a politician and say, hey, you know, I need to do that, uh, if I give you, you know, my vote or my, my family vote, which is like 50 people, they will never do it. Yeah. They I, more hooked for big things. Yeah, and that's and that's when I when I lived in Brazil, this was a big topic because I have some friend like one of my friends is a really well known reporter there, mm -hmm. and she was like, Derek, you don't understand, it's so corrupt here, and she's kind of describing it like you did yeah. with Italy, and I said, well, we have the same thing in the U.S. What most people don't realize is we just write the laws yeah. in a way that make it legal. Yeah. So we call it lobbying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had a, a friend, actually, they just sent me this really cool postcard. They live out in uh, Hamburg, in <laughs> Hamburg, 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 in, in Germany, Hamburg. And uh, we, were, we were talking about politics around the U.S. stuff. And I said, go look up gerrymandering. And then, uh, then we can finish this conversation. I said, you know, let's talk about that more. And she responded, she sent me a message, and she's like, Derek, I read about gerrymandering. It it sounds like corruption. And I'm like, yeah, it basically <laughs> is. It's how we redraw the lines to vote. Oh, yeah. It's like we set things up in a way that uh, could be really corrupt in other countries, but we've like designed them so that they're normal and part of the law. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you know, uh, the way... USA, I mean, th this this nation, you know, the founder of this nation, everything, they get the best and the worst of any nation in the world. They redesign and they, they customize in a way that is so perfect that, you know, that's what it is now, right? They still like, you know, uh, we still have like the same laws in Italy. They get laws from everywhere and mm -hmm. they, they change like 500, 600 years old country. They could do that, just redesign in a way that this is so strong and perfect. But what they're trying to do now, they just break apart everything, right? The system. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I mean, there's a law that sometimes is so old that they don't make sense, right? Yeah. They need to, you know, readapt it because, you know, uh, Again, evolution, right? Things changing that don't work anymore, this type of law. But you know, it's not to me decide what is right or wrong. But what I'm trying to say is that I was uh, kind of, you know, talking with a friend about politics the other day. Say, hey, at least in Italy, if you vote for someone, I could have something in exchange. Yeah, the population have shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can go to a guy and say, hey, man, I've, uh, my cousin, all my cousins, they voted for you. Now, you know, you promised that things. And so you have to, you know, you have to do it, okay? Or oh, next time, no vote for you. In this country, it don't happen. The profit is just lobby. Just lobbies. Yeah. The, the population, they don't get anything in favor for anything, you know? If the person that go in power want to do something, does, if they don't do it, don't do anything, you know? But lobby, you see, they make money all the time. We've, we've seen that in, in California. Crazy. Like, throughout 2020, uh, you know, I... Went into other pl went to Utah. I went to Wyoming. I went to I have family in Texas. I went to Texas a couple of times, and then coming back here to San Diego and California, just seeing the differences because of who's in power. Where we generally, as Americans, think of freedom and the bald eagle and the flag oh, yeah, is yeah. like our symbol for here's who we are, and it was really obvious uh, who, what, when, where, why, and how. Uh, those things transpired, man. That's a, a big... How long have you been in the U.S.? It's 10 years now, almost. 10 years. Yeah. It, that's, yeah. That's a long time, you know. I'm thinking to go back to Italy sometimes, you know, to move back there. I mean, just an idea. I mean, I, lately, I, I don't really... I don't know, man. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. You know, I did good here. You know, this is, is, is the land of the opportunity, you know things that I did here, the connection and everything. I mean, I wished I moved here uh, when I was 18. I'll be multi-billionaire now, you know? <laughs> uh, but um, lately, I don't like the way the things go. Maybe because I'm in California, I don't know. <laughs> but maybe because yeah. I'm in California. Uh, but they, they go really weird. The stupid, the very stupid things happen that don't make sense anymore, you know? Just like... It's too much. I mean, it's a good, like, changing is good, but, you know, I feel like, you know, they changing too much things and there's no benefit for anyone anymore, you know. Uh, that, that's, that's, 
that's sad, right? Because everybody dream is like coming to US and you know achieve something and happen. You know, I see it all like uh, I mean, because I'm Italian, I see a lot of big Italian name, you know, in the movie industry or whatever, you know, a restaurant or whatever, you know, succeed here. But uh, I don't know. I think I think I will go back, you know, one day and just settle there because it's hard. It's hard to be here now, you know. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. I mean, ca California, especially, it, it feels like things are opening up a little bit more. But I mean, uh, you know, the the places that, and I already know some people are going to think this is, you know, irresponsible or whatever. But I, I'm a huge proponent of of choice and. <laughs> You know, when I go do things like visit my grandma or people that are at risk, I, I make sure I get my testing. Um, but I, you know, I was training jujitsu throughout the year and and still going to hot yoga. Like I don't think that's allowed. So we go through the back alley, and it's is it right? Is it wrong? <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I don't yeah. really know, especially when I go there and there's twelve doctors in there oh, yeah. saying like this is okay. So yeah. it is. It is pretty odd. It's pretty strange. Um, and uh, it is time for change. One of my biggest lessons that someone shared with me in, in April last year is they said in times of crises, it's not that there are any new problems actually, right? And we could just look at a virus. Like viruses are here. They've been around for a while. This one's obviously a little different than some of the ones we faced recently. But they said in times of crisis, it's not that anything is, is new. It's that everything that already exists is magnified oh yeah absolutely and, and so whether it was a, a problem something quote-unquote bad or something good i mean i saw people that were in a really great place take it to a whole new level of, of amazing life or business or fitness or whatever that is people that were struggling it was a really great opportunity to figure out why and how and face that and and you either dove into some some self-development and, and grew out of it or you dove into some netflix maybe you dove into a little bit of both uh you know but it, it it's been really interesting because every time someone brings something i mean they're like you know what about this we're talking about solving a challenge or creating a solution that stuck with me so hard that i can often look at things you know when it comes to, to business or doing things remotely you know we think oh we're using technology or we're using a camera it's so much different than in person well it's really not, I mean, it is in a sense that, you know, you may not be sitting across from somebody, but what are the things that are similar? And this goes back to different religions. I mean, this is a life thing yeah, for me yeah, in terms of yeah. like how, I like we're, we're often trained from a very small age to look at how things are different. I love to figure out like, how are these things similar? And there's usually a lot of good that comes out of that. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, in, uh, the Latin used to say, morte, vi, uh, morte mia vita tua, which means... Uh, my death is your life in the sense that uh, uh, sometimes, you know, you have to think that what is painful for you or hurt you, can I can profit for. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happened here in the U.S. Yeah. You have a scene like business changing or people profit from, uh, you know, bad things that happen. You've seen, you know, all the time, you know. But uh, again, you know, I feel like People didn't didn't move in any other direction. Most of the people just sat and waited hmm. that things come back to normal. Hmm. You cannot do that. Just sit yeah. and wait. You know. I mean, that that's what people did. It they waited for a government help and support and things like that. Sometimes you just you have to reinvent yourself and move forward and see how to make the shit happen again, right? Do you do you think the that folks that generally, because like uh, I think about my experience growing up and like being on welfare and things like that, right? And, and that was actually really motivating for me to not, like that's one of the things that motivates me in life is to not live like that ever again. And there's like terms in psychology, trained helplessness, things like that. And so, I mean, one of our themes really today has been talking about struggle and pain. Have, have you ever Have you ever been in a point in life where you, so you talk about gaps too in terms of oh, motivation yeah. and things. What do you think is the difference between anybody? Maybe it's ourselves, maybe it's somebody else, like sitting there going, someone help me or I'm going to help myself. Uh, listen, I have to tell you something because uh, uh, I've been uh, traveling till I was 16, okay? I've been around the walls, sleeping on the floor, or oh, have no money, like, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Fasting <laughs> for two <laughs> days, you know, <laughs> fasting for a couple of days, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, right. like intentional, not intentional. <laughs> but uh, the the thing is this: I always have been positive, and that's something that my grandfather always told me: be positive, be positive, uh, be happy, smile, even if you feel not to smile. Because, you know, be positive, be nice to people. When I was traveling around with no money and food means a place, a place to sleep and food, food on my mouth. Because I'm nice to you. Hey, man, come to my house. Oh, don't, oh come on. I'll go for your lunch. Oh, you want a coffee? Come on. You know, things like that. It happened all the time, man. Because I was nice and I was positive. I uh, would give a good vibe to people. And that helped me a lot in life, man. Imagine if you're a rude motherfucker. Who want to help you out, invite to, uh, home for dinner, or uh, I'll give you like a, a, a place to sleep, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, that, and that's a funny one for me too because I'm, I'm a big believer in that. Uh, goes around, comes around, helping others when you can. And there's kind of two, two parts, right? I, I feel like you do have to guard your energy, guard kind of your time sometimes to, to be able to put yourself in a position to give more. And so you have to learn... When you can, when you can, when you're enabling versus when you're actually helping someone. And then the other thing is, I mean, where we live right now, I mean, we're in La Jolla right oh, now. Yeah. Like there are some people that have been very successful. I mean, yeah. and that's, you could define that with money, whatever you want, that are kind of asses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see all the time, man. Around my neighborhood, they're all freaking, you know, dickhead, country club dickhead, you know, <laughs> <laughs> all around there, you know, <laughs> just like that's uh, what it is. I, I don't get along with anyone, you know. I, <laughs> I don't feel like, you know, but not that I'm rude. I'm not rude. I don't, no, not rude to me, yeah. but I don't feel the vibe. I don't feel like, you know, something, okay, man, come to my house, get a coffee. I mean, I'm Italian, so I always say my friend, you know, they get still getting used to. They say, mm-hmm. hey, if you, if I'm at home, if you see the car, you know, come in, just walk to the door, stop by, get a coffee, sit, let's have a chat, you know. In here in the US, they're not used to that. Yeah. In Italy, it's normal. Hey, come, make your coffee. Come to talk. No problem. You have to call, you have to plan, you have to figure out two months before for a freaking coffee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, walk to the door, bring a bottle of wine, sit and drink. Come you know, that's in. what we do, right? Here, I, I don't see that. It's kind of, you know, very cold. Everything needs to be planned. The play date for my daughter needs to be planned. And my, no, back then, friends, knock to the door. Easy, home. You're done with homework. Let's go play. No, no, no kids knock to your door now and say, hey, let's go. No, they have to root, they have to call, they have to ask the father and the father to the mom and see. Oh, no. Now the kids have to go uh, uh, hockey at two and dance at three. And I mean, everything is like, you know, schedule. No, we used to stay on the road and play all day and figure things out, get bored. When you get bored, you become creative, you have fun. That's what we used to do. You have to get fucking bored. <laughs> well, so you talked about human trafficking earlier too, right? And, yeah. and I think of, uh, like when you say kids playing outside, I, I hear parents go, I'm like <laughs> worried about my kids playing outside. And I think of a few pieces to that. One is statistically, and, and you can say whatever you want about statistics because we can manipulate yeah. them, whatever. But right now, statistically, this is actually the safest time to be alive in human history. If you go back 400 oh, years, yeah. thousand years, whatever, we're, we live right here, right? Where the cove is at. Not that long ago, I could have been out walking by the beach and Vikings could have come up and oh, like yeah. slaughtered exactly. the village, right? Yeah. So we forget about these things. <laughs> and and I, I mean, I also had a ridiculous amount of, of freedom sometimes as a kid. It's kind of a weird discipline freedom thing. But I'd take off on my bike for like six hours, come back, whatever, and not a care in the world. Maybe it was bad parenting. Who knows? But Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so how do you, you know, how do you have that freedom with kids, with family environment, and still be smart about it in terms of protecting your loved ones. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Nowadays, is almost impossible because nobody let... That would be just my daughter walking on the street. <laughs> I can tell her, hey, go yeah, go play. But they, nobody let kids anymore outside. That's even if I go to Italy, I don't see kids. I mean, we're like 20 kids playing on the street, you know, throwing rocks to each other, <laughs> uh, go on a mission in the morning and come back at night. And never my dad asked me, hey, where you have you been all day? A full mm-hmm. of scar and things, you know, hiding scar, because if you see you have scar, it's going to be the shit out of you. You get hurt, right? So uh, nowadays it's almost impossible because 
I mean, back then, like 20, 30 kids all on the streets, they're always kids. But now, you know, people, the kids stay home because technology, you know, computer, video games and things, and parents are scared about uh, let uh, kids go. If you're 20 kids, who gonna, you're going to go there and kidnap 20 kids. You know, I'm, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, obviously those type of things happened. They're still happening now. But, you know, if the, the kids don't gather anymore in the street, they don't have like even light, man. In Italy, we have, I mean, if you go in my neighbor, it's so freaking dark at night time. In Italy, we have light on the street everywhere. Yeah. You know, you see everywhere. The piazza is light. Kids gathering in there. Man, you go here. You don't see any freaking light. It's so oh, dark. Even in the village, you see place. how dark it is at nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's not even fun to walk, you know. So that's that's also another thing, you know. They, they are not, uh, I feel like they are not uh, organized for people being outdoor in the, in the sense. You know, is you don't it, see a piazza. In the, in the village, there's no piazza. Is it Fear or is it no? They just no because people go in bars, they go in places, stay in the house, and things like that. In Italy, we have the piazza where everybody go there. There's a bar around. You, there's, there isn't. There isn't. There's, it's not. There's a, a more. It's not, there's community. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so, do you think that holds people when you have something like that where it's hey we congregate on Friday night, Saturday? You see the same people more and more. Is there a feel of like uh, like social responsibility where people treat each other nicer too? Because you have to see your neighbors and you have to see people. Around? I don't know, man. I feel like it's so fake. Really? I feel like it is not like you know happening naturally. You know, I'm saying you have to plan those type of things. You Here know? Or, or Italy? Here, I mean, but Italy, it's in like Italy more, is just yeah. natural. You just yeah. say, hey, ten minutes before, let's go eat a pizza. A fucking plan a week before, a month before, you know, say, hey, where are you going? I'm going to the bar to get, oh, come with me, let's go. Mm-hmm. You know, things like that. People are kind of feel like here, they wrap up in their own life and it's so hard to organize things or plan things. And to organize, everything is so planned organized. The Christmas party, this party, or this type of party, the baby shower and that. I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, I didn't even had idea existed till I came here, you know, like the baby shower things or this event, these little things that people have to gather, the Halloween party, the Christmas party, and this type of party or this dinner. I mean, they're just weird things. Do you, do you think part of that helps with what, what we're talking about in terms of inventing and building great things? I mean, do you think this structure, the trade-off, right, is... We're not all going to the piazza on Friday night, but also this planning, this organization, this life structure, in a sense, is, is helping some for some people, not everybody, but for some people like yourself, right? Create more sometimes. Do you think there's a they're tied together? Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, pre- before I was saying, like, you know, uh, people need to get bored to invent, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. that's important. I mean, probably, I mean, if I was so busy or if I had a job or other things to do it, you know, I'd never invented, you know, what I invented, you know, or, or like, you know, create a hydro uh, reach out of hydro core, which, which hydro reach was created by mistake. When I was at the beach, I was testing hydro core and, uh, 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 I didn't have brought my water to drink. You know, the beach here, there's no bar and things. And <laughs> so I started drinking the water from the bag. And then I came up with the idea. I said, wait a minute, this can be a good carry-on for, you know, people transporting water, you know. But I was not thinking like third world country back then. I was thinking about uh, more um, camping, you know, like a recreational market, things like that. And then, you know, with my friend, he told me, oh, no, this could be good because he showed me like all the project he was doing, building wells and stuff like that. But again, going back to that, you know, yeah, definitely people need to, if you're like an isolation, maybe you're more creative than, you know, being with other people, you know, because it's too much distraction, right? Mm. But uh, again, the way, because of my culture, the way we do things, uh, they're never planned. They would just do it, you know, they just come to my house and knock to the door, don't even call you, say, hey, I was in the neighborhood, you know, let me... What are you doing? So come in, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you the code so you can stop by. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I come in and see like brewing coffee by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, and see, I'd actually be for the most part, it depends on who it is, but you, I mean, yeah, if you, I came over here just making some espresso and then I'd be like, hey, what's up? That's cool. Let's go get a workout in at the yeah, beach, Yeah, right? exactly, right? We start working out for Tanzania, man. Uh, when, when is that, by the way? Well, I plan in August. Because it's the best month to go there and uh, still like developing the hydro uh, reach uh, prototype bag. 
which now is a new uh, Chinese New Year, so the factory are closed in China, mm. and uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, working on the product there. So I believe uh, April May we're gonna have already the bag uh, ready for uh, uh, on the catalog of the company that will distribute the bag, and planning to go in uh, Tanzania in August because it's the best weather also to go up in the Kilimanjaro. Wow. Uh, so yeah, we want to go there and uh, doing that. So we have time, but we start working out. Okay, I'm. Uh, man, some I, I love those. Shit. I love those beach workouts. Yeah, I. You know. Uh, the heat, training in the heat. We got to work out at the so beach yeah, more. I'm looking pale, man. I, I had a little bit of a rough a rough patch with uh, <laughs> you some health freaking things. Freaking Irish. <laughs> oh man, yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, you know it's cool. So. Appreciate you stopping by too. Yeah, There's a couple man, of things that was, that was awesome. I loved it. You know how how can so you got HydroCore fitness product people can pick up on on onit.com. They yeah. can check you out on Instagram. Sure. Hydro.core. Uh, yeah. Uh, you've got Hydro Reach, and that's nonprofit. You're nonprofit. Tanzania is the first destination. Sounds like you have places all over the world that you're yeah yeah that'll be awesome and and thinking about, and and people can can donate. They can. Donate hydro reach bags via throwing some. Yeah, we will set up a better uh, website dedicated to hydro reach project. Mm -hmm. And uh, so people can go in and uh, through the organization they will take over, there'll be a nonprofit so they can do like tax payoff and things like that. So, uh, and again, they they don't need to donate like, you know, million dollars, you know, eventually, Mm -hmm. possibly. (laughs) But, uh, you know, mostly, you know, they can just come with me in some of this destination and, you know, help us with that already. Like Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, yeah. We're going to go to uh, Nepal. We're going to go to South America. We're going to go a lot of places. Uh, Possibly, uh, I mean, hopefully there will not happen any hurricane or disaster, but we will also help people when there is a uh, some some you know tragedy happen you know this disaster and bring back to transport the water and purify sounds, water. Sounds yeah. amazing, man. So let's say let's say I'm gonna buy and I'm gonna have a hydrocore and I know how to track you down if I yeah. need to learn how to <laughs> use it. But the, the average person, I mean, there's gonna be some people that hear this that are like uh, like there's a guy I know that actually he's gonna uh, we're looking to schedule some time, plan nice. some time to do this. Super cool guy, big bodybuilder dude. Not bodybuilder, he would get me for that power lifter. Okay, excuse okay. me. Uh, JD Reynolds is going to get me, but, uh, so some people can figure out how to use this thing. Some people can't, if I'm like a stay at home mom or something, what, sure. what kind of tools do you have for someone that, that purchases something like this? And to so in, uh, on the hydro, uh, dot core, uh, Instagram, uh, mm-hmm. there is a link in the bio. You can, uh, uh, actually buy, uh, the app. So subscribe to the app. You've got an app. And okay. there is a, the entire library. There is a workout. There is like tutorial to run with the Hydro Core. Uh, there is a lot of fun stuff. You can see it. So you can just start the library. Now we have a, like, you know, uh, quite a big library with the, an entire program to follow also. We will um, upload more stuff every month, more, more, and more. So... Uh, I believe, like in in, this, in the next six months, there will be a huge library of movement. But already, there's like a lot of workout to perform, so it's very interesting. I saw the, uh, I guess it's co-founder, owner, part owner, Ab- Aubrey, Mar- Audrey Aubrey, Mar- Aubrey, 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 Aubrey Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, yeah. The, from on, I saw him using it on. Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, a lot. Right. He uses a lot. He's in the Sedona, uh, and uh, yeah, he used, he probably is the tool they use a lot with the kettlebell because in his house, you know, there, so it's perfect. That's yeah, for him. Cool, man. Traveling well, around is perfect. Yeah. Oh, well, Mauricio, man, it's been it's been really fun. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, and uh, we'll go ahead and and wrap this up. Any any final thoughts? Anything you want to share? No, I mean, there was a very nice talk, you know, and uh, you know, possibly when we will. Uh, 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 start or when we come back from Tanzania, we're going to talk more about our experience about hydro reach. Yeah, keep up the great work, and yeah. I love that uh, you're able to to do such beautiful things in the world and, and take that motivation and time to help others too. That's big. I appreciate my man. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll cut. The, oh my gosh, that sounds so different without the headphones on. Uh, yeah, you feel like, like a little <laughs> tunnel. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun, man. It was a good stuff. Oh,